who actually is in the control of the car most of the time and who you know who who knows how to drive uh, how to drive fast mhm mm yeah you well, really my, get to okay. see some impressive performance to be completely fair on most of the uh, simulators or video games we play uh the wet tarmac is not really how the wet tarmac uh, how the wet tarmac works in real life because on, on you know on this on this game, all you have to when it's wet, all you have to do is just use the dry line and go like eighty percent fast. And in real life, it's uh it's way different. Real life, my experience with bad traction is snow. I've never been in conditions so wet that I had difficulty having traction. But in the snow, let's just say uh, accelerating out onto the highway when it's really snowy is an exciting time. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get that speed. Yeah, yeah, seeing, you know, where, where, where's my traction control? Okay, so I'm I'm on board with Raro. Brick. As am I. 05.0. I think that's an okay time. I don't even remember what's like the, uh, a good time around here. Well, like it, I, I think we're looking at 104s, uh, maybe into the 103s here. Yeah, I think possibly one, one, a low 104 here. Maybe. Well, you never know. You could, like you could you get, said. you could get a real god lap in here. Pat with a 0.4.5. It's pretty, pretty close right now. Pretty close. Oh, and Raro with a 4.6. Yeah, plus MP2. So we got... who are we miss? I don't know who are we missing. I'm not sure. Well, I could pull up my uh, my standings. But, uh, so Prestige, she's one of the one of the new drivers, is that correct? Yeah, Prestige, uh, Gab, Flag. Yes, yeah, I think those are the two whose names I don't recognize. We are missing one more new person. And Bruno is uh, El Susio Dan, correct? It's uh, that Droga guy. Oh, okay. That, that's... He's the only one missing. I I did send an invite and I saw that he joined. So all he needs to do is just hit uh, take control. Okay, I see Luke dropped. So uh, I'll get him an invite. Here we go. Oh, that's unfortunate. Prestige uh, gets his lap disallowed on the first corner before starting the lap. So he'll have to abort that one. Red Baron on pole with a one hundred four point four eleven. Yeah, we got. Oh, wait, JT is in here, so. And so is uh, Bruno. Bruno is uh, El Susio Dan. The oh, yes. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll bet that I cut out there because I was saying Bruno Araya is El Susio Dan, right? Yeah, I, did, I didn't hear that. Uh, okay, well, I, I, I apologize for my internet, and I will personally uh, send a very sternly worded uh, message to Northwest Town. <laughs> You will you will get to hear the conversation from my perspective when I upload this uh, video. Let's see, Bruno. All right, One here comes Prestige. So, Bruno with uh, 1043. I would That's expect I, that this is gonna improve yeah. by. I think high high 103s. I think high 103s is definitely doable. Okay, on board. Oh, little moment for prestige there. Did you just get a migrating host? We may have just lost Cub here. Alright, we're going to see if relaunching the game is going to sort that out.
Looks like Checo is doing well on it. Oh, hey, I just have reconnected. I just heard you yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah, do you need an, an invite back? Uh, no, I've got several invites still here. Okay, just let me know if you need one. Much obliged. So look, with a P1 time, 104.0. 104.0, nice. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, we were, it's actually we were thinking... really close all, like everywhere, like from P1 to uh, P10, actually P11. It's just a uh, one second difference. Everything in between. Well, that's, like, really that's close. the question. Is, is how, how are the Brax brothers going to do? Because their connections have been such an Achilles heel, but they really do have good pace. And they've deserved better results than they've gotten in the past because of that. Yeah. It really sucks that, you know, the, uh, there's an external factor that uh, stops them from racing with us. But also, the new guy, the prestige guy in the McLaren, uh, he's uh, P4 currently. He's P4? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Just a half of a tenth behind Bruno. And uh, Rogan in P2 with uh, 104.1. <sighs> uh, let's see if... Is JD out? Yeah, JD is out. And he's... Uh, he's on a hot lap right now. Also, on my screen, I don't see his hands for some reason. Code, Has code JD or changed his name, or did I, just for some reason, not see his name? I'm, I'm not seeing his hands too! Uh, by that I mean his name. Oh, his name. Uh, yeah, yeah, he he is there actually. I, I might I might need to to revise my podium prediction. I didn't see that he was in the edge. Speaking of which, just goes fastest when a one o three point two. Okay. For some reason, I had missed seeing his name in the list of people who arrived for this race because I definitely like he is definitely got to be on the podium unless he has a really disastrous race. I think because he's been very strong lately. I've been impressed. He is he is uh, one of the two top runners. So uh him, JD and uh Bruno. Those guys usually fight for the win. Mm hmm Well yeah, those are uh, a very good time. One oh three two. It's actually kind of crazy, because uh, most of the time I notice that when they qualify, their lap times are faster than Diff 1. Well, I mean, Cub, you do have to recall that I'm in Div 1. It's not like Div 1 means more skilled. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, you know, I, I'd say most of the people are maybe not more skilled, but more in control of their car, I would say. Because, you know, we, we run no assists. Alright, so uh, right now we've got uh, El Susio Dan Bruno just coming in after setting a lap. He's fifth place, but with mediums. So that's yeah. definitely something to keep an eye out for. 104.3 on mediums is a very nice lap. Actually, is that mediums? Because uh, he just did a lap. On, I think that first lap was on softs, actually. Yeah. His, uh, Bruno's lap was on soft. Oh, am I misreading that? Because he was on the yellow tires as he came in there. Did he not set a faster lap? Yeah, because he, oh, okay. he, uh, he did not set a lap on those. It's possible that I'm also seeing things a little bit messed up because of my disconnection yeah. there. Yeah, that could be the case. How, what's, uh, how much time is there left on your end? Uh, 4 minutes 56 seconds on my okay, end. So we, we are about the same. Because uh, I don't know why, but usually the uh, the spectator timer uh, it's a it's a bit off, like a uh, one minute off. So when we see yeah, that the qualifying that. is uh, is done, they actually still have a uh, a minute left. Ooh, All right, Chris puts it gets himself through. on. Yeah, he was he was sitting in last place without a lap time there, so that's good to see him up there at the sharp end of the grid. And uh, that's the third driver to go under the 104 barrier.
and Dan has headed out for a new outlet. I suppose I should go by uh, by the name he's going by uh, um, now, rather than what I previously have known him as. So Bruno, uh, heading out for what's going to have to... Mm, let's see, I, I don't think you'd be able to do another... Uh, actually, yeah, he's just barely got enough time to do two laps if he really rushes it. Um... Because maybe, maybe our our timers our timers a bit off, so I give him an extra oh, yeah. thirty seconds. Yeah, I think he's got time for uh, this run and one more. I think. Oh, here it comes! Everything's all warmed up. Yeah, he's been spending some ERS just getting around really fast this lap. He knows he has to be quick if he wants to get two laps in here. So I'll just ride on board with him. See what we get here. Coming up to turn two. Nice and tight. Power down. The most unbelievable thing in all of this is the crowds. Oh, yeah. Where's my verisimilitude? Oh, lock up into turn three. But he keeps it going, keeps it going. Coming around the central loop. Oh, and one of the Red Bulls just spawned out of turn one. Power's on, only two turns to go now. He's up by six tenths. Mm, that's not enough to take it. On he invalidates. Ah, uh, invalidates on the last corner. Disaster. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, I don't think he has enough time. No, he he won't ha have enough time to do an in lap and an out lap, unless he's nope. got that extra thirty seconds. But even then, it's going to be real tight. But he is going full uh -huh. race pace back, so he's going to try it. Because starting starting from seventh is going to be unfortunate for him. Yeah, it's definitely going to put JD in a, in a good spot for the race. Yes, the the proverbial catbird seat. Yeah, going to be in the clean air, no extra tire work because of you know the dirty air. Nobody is in front of him, and his main rival is like you know six uh, positions behind him. Yeah, it's a good spot for him to be in right now, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It's 79 points for a, for a JDR, and uh, 70, 79 to 76 between the two of them. First, second, uh, wasn't able to race in China. Second and second, compared to wasn't able to race in Australia. First, retired. First, first. So thus far, every single race that he has finished, Bruno has been a winner. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Certainly is. And uh, thus far, there's been a decent monopolization of podiums thus far. So this is the sixth race of the season, and in the previous five, the podium finishers have been JDR, they've been Bruno, uh, Rogaine's had two third places, and Griff has had three, Raro has his one victory, uh, and Lacadien in that same race, the Chinese Grand Prix, came second. Meanwhile, there's been guys like Balzac who have just been, you know, workhorsing their way through, 7th, 6th, 7th, 6th, 4th, getting really consistent good points there, and he's still uh, pretty far up there in the championship. Yeah. Think of JD as a Mercedes, think of uh, Bruno as a Red Bull, and then think of, uh, you said Balzac, right? Uh, yes, I did say Balzac. Yeah. Yeah, McLaren? let's think of him as a McLaren, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Prestige coming up for a lap here. Although he's down a little bit. He's Not got sure no if he's going to be able to improve. Yeah, I'm curious as to what's going on there. Is this a... Could is this be a an second lap? lap? Yeah, this, this could well be. An, that's the only way that makes sense. I might have caught him on his second lap. Yeah, yeah, it is. He's two laps out. Meanwhile, uh, I'd like to point out that Balzac is just and leading. Rogaine. Okay, time, time is up. Okay, so it says time time is up, and uh, El Susio Dan was 
uh, just uh, just three turns away from uh, from starting a new lap, but I don't think he's yeah. going to be able to make he it. He didn't make it. There's a checkered flag next to his name on my end. Yep. Well, that is going to be a difficult start, but let's see what he can do, and maybe we are going to have some difficult conditions because uh, our our weatherman. Uh, Red Baron did send me that uh, some information that there is going to be some rain after practice, uh, or at least 75 minutes into qualifying, I should say, which is not that important for this qualifying session, but who knows what that might bode for the race. Certainly, wet Austria has happened before, and it has been quite an interesting show. So, I you know, I, I'd love to see it. Is there anyone who's still setting a lap here? Let's see, where's no. Rogan? I think Rogan uh... is still... Rogan is still... Uh, no, no, he's going, he's going slow. He's going slow, Jay is going to the pit, so we got... Luke Brax is retired. Yeah, so he we've got our grid, it looks JD. like. Yeah, JDR JD. takes pole, Rogaine and Krith. So hey, there's there's my, uh, let's see, I, I was calling uh, Krith and Bolzik, so Rogaine, uh, doing very nicely there, qualifying second on the grid. Krith in third, Bolzik fourth, Luke Brax in fifth, and Red Baron sixth. Uh, Prestige, seventh, very good to see that from our new driver. Uh, Bruno, down in 8th, that's going to be tricky, but I don't doubt his ability to get past people. But that's just going to give such an advantage to JDR to just build a gap and not surrender it, if he doesn't make any mistakes. Rauer starting ninth ahead of Pat Lassard in 10th. Ian Brax is going to be the first man with free choice of tire. And then Lekadien, Gab Flag, the other new driver, Bricklot in 14th, Nameless Nate in 15th, and Jail Patel in 16th place. So okay. then, it's by half a second. Uh, that's a that's a strong pole position. That's a that's a that's Hamiltonian pole position right gap. there. Uh, but yeah, we've got we, a nice we little do cluster. Podium predictions now. Absolutely. So I'm gonna say. I mean, it seems like a bit of a, a bit of a basic prediction here. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Prith and Balzac, expecting them on the podium here. I'm gonna say JDR Krith Balzac. Although maybe it could be JDR Bruno Krith if he has a really good race there. You know what? I'm going to go with that. JDR Bruno Krith. Okay, I'm going to say JD and P1 simply because he's got that big advantage over Bruno. P2, I, I'm going to say Bruno too. I think pace-wise he's just better than everyone in here. And... Unfortunately, he's not so far back, he gets free choice of tires, so he still has to start on the same strategy as all the front runners. Yeah, and uh, P3, I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say Balzac. I'm gonna say Balzac because I think he asked me to do it. To put him on and the I, I do have to point out, though, I perhaps we are not giving the credit that we need to give to Rogaine. He hasn't finished worse than fourth all season. Huh, that's if that's he, solid. Yeah, like, uh, I, so... What we get from this is, I don't expect him to fall down much in the order. So you know, I might be I might be underrating him to suggest that he's not uh, on my podium prediction here. So he's definitely a a strong chance in this race. Yeah, I think he was also the only driver that did not get any penalties in Canada, if uh, if I remember that correctly. We could go check, but I will not alt tab out of my game. That's fair. I've got my, I've got my unofficial results table. I've got a. It's a lot narrower than the than the official one. So my little Google sheet, sitting off on the side where I'm just peeking over all of these and getting my stats from. All right. So for strategies, you think we're we're looking at mostly mostly one stops here. Uh, yeah, I would say so. I think uh, just soft, even to mediums, that's doable. Because I remember Nick uh, did that in Div 1. Mm -hmm. He struggled with pace towards the like, last 5 laps, but he was faster throughout the, throughout the stint than me. And I did uh, softs to hards, actually. So uh, I think a one-stop is definitely the way to go here. So, you know, this is a, this track is, you know, there isn't like many twisty parts of it. You don't really get a lot of tire wear. You got a straight after a straight after a straight. So, a one stop is the way to go here. 
It's uh, it just the uh, what matters is if you want to go on mediums, you want you definitely gonna have to save some of the uh, tire at the start of your stint because you're not gonna make it. Unless, Unless there there are a couple of drivers who are just very gentle on the braking, very gentle on the acceleration, and while that does cost you a lot of time, if that happens to be your particular style, then you know you can you can pull off those strategies a lot more easily. I know that I tend to be tend to be fairly ginger on my tires, so I can often get away with strategies that, for instance, I I chat strategy with Lucky Moose all the time, and he's very aggressive. Very, uh, very hard on acceleration, hard on his braking, and he uh, he definitely needs to pull off the slightly more conservative strategies so that he can pull his much less conservative driving style off. All right, here we go. Two lights, three, four, and five. Austrian Grand Prix season two FRL, and here we go. Oh, jump start from JL Patel. So far in the front, all good. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh that's a Red Bull off on the, the side. That's a Red Bull, I think. Oh, no, that was a oh, no, that's Pat Lassard. Alright, well, he's going and, to have to do Rogan a first lap this And P1 from JD, just send it on the inside, and JD's fallen down the order. Oh, no. This he's is going P5, to be difficult. I think. Yeah. He is going to be P5, or maybe he's going to stick it and keep it P4, maybe? Bruno, meanwhile, has not made up any places on the start. Yeah, but now he's almost right behind JD, who is uh, P5 currently. He's going to be well, P4 now. He's going to be he's going to be the man to watch right now. It might be very entertaining to watch things from his perspective. A little wiggle from Prestige. Bruno taking a peek at it. Walzik taps the grass on the inside, but he keeps it under control. And here we go. This is going to be one of the first big overtaking opportunities of the race beyond the very beginning. Here we go. Up the inside. Bruno, with the full deployment, going to dive. Locks up a little bit. And he is through on Prestige into seventh place. He is now three positions behind JDR, who has had a difficult start. That's a yellow flag in Sector and 1. Brick what is this? Just, Red Baron. Brick just spun out of turn 1. I think he wanted to overtake somebody on the inside, and I, I think they made contact. I don't know. And Jayo Patel and Nameless Nate both out of the pits. So Rogaine in P1. And with, Red uh, Baron in third place. Yeah, this is Rogaine. Yeah, you know, it's only lap there two, we go. And he's already got that big of a gap. So all he needs to do is really just keep that, keep that pace. And play it smart, there. play it safe. Let the other people get in his way. Yeah, I think he just got a purple sector too, actually. Indeed. Rogaine, or somebody. And hey there, brother John. Uh, I, I'd like to say that uh, so far Prestige is doing a very nice job. He's keeping your uh, McLaren safe. He is coming in for an early pit stop, though. What is this going to be? Did he get a little bit of damage? I might have just spoken at the worst possible yeah. moment there. So JD is going to make a move on uh, Red Baron, nothing he can really do here, he was just way too close uh, on the exit of turn 1. And we've got a tight little battle here, uh, Bruno following Balzac, following Luke Brax, following Red Baron, everyone within DRS range here, it's just a big DRS train all yeah, the from way from, from, uh, from first back, honestly. To, from first to seventh, it's just a DRS train, honestly. And here we go, Balzac defending off of uh, off of Bruno. Bruno looking at the inside, but that's just going to compromise his line. You're not going to make a pass into there unless you have a huge pace differential. And right now, everyone's oh, oh a near oh, moment that was there. A scary moment for him. Actually, more than a near moment. That was a full moment right there. Yeah. He managed to save it, but he lost a little bit of time. Yeah, that's going to take him outside of DRS range and fastest lap for JDR, 1065. He wants this lead back. Yeah, and Jirogin under attack from Kruf and JD. JD is Let's right see. behind him. He's looking at the outside. Now he's looking to the inside. Is he going to make a dive? He's not. Okay, not he's at this moment. Safe. Ooh, oh my god. He gets a little bit close. Oh, but Rogan now behind. Kruf takes the lead. Rogan goes a little wide. JDR is going to have to back up from this. And now... Both with DRS open, but JDR is going to want to make a move here. Can he do it, though? 
DRS is closed, and it stays there. We're going to watch from Red Baron's seat here. Oh, a penalty picked up for Krith from multiple warnings, and oh, up the inside, the JDR! Inside. Barry takes it. I honestly did not expect that to happen. No, that's a very difficult spot to overtake, but JDR, we know he has the pace. He can make moves that these other guys are going to have a lot of difficulty just because he's squeezing out an extra tenth, an extra half a tenth out of some of these mini sectors. Looks like Pelissar just had a moment out of uh, turn two there, uh, but he's carrying on. Yeah, and Bruno having trouble with passing Balzac. Still in P7. Well, we know that Balzac's good. He's not He's not a pusher. Oh, no! Oh, there was contact there impact. between Bruno and Balzac. Is his front wing damaged? I am looking at that. Both I'm looking at it as well. Stone, I cannot see attack. any damage. It looks like he might have gotten away with it. Yeah. Ooh, yes, he has. And Balzac up the inside! Just two spots through here. And Just the one, I think. Back in first. Was, was Luke Brax behind him beforehand? I thought that Luke Brax was ahead of him. I am not sure what happened, but looks looked like uh, Luke Brax... Oh, Bruno, another moment! And now Bruno gives it right back. That work undone, unfortunately. Fortunately for him, though, Rauro is slipping back, so he's not able to capitalize on that. That rare end just doesn't want to stick. He is running a slippery setup that really, really kills him going out past the uh, past the center field. You know what? I think he might be driving the real life Hass actually, or the the driver himself is uh, what do we call? Him? I think we call him Maze Spin right now. Maze Spin. Well, Mazespin. I don't I don't oh, think yeah. that's a nice thing to say <laughs> of anyone here. Oh no, that was that was rude of me. Well, so, nonetheless, we still have a tight fight for first place. Rogan, Krith, and JDR is in the lead. So now, we're going to look, how is this going to play out? Is JDR going to begin to pull out a lead here, or is Krith going to be able to keep him in DRS range? He's right at the very tenuous edge of DRS range. But if he slips out, and he's sitting right at the edge of a second, if JDR slips out, I think he's going to be able to start pulling away. And there he is. He's going to be outside of DRS range. Now JDR is going to work on building up a gap. And critically, Bruno is not past Balzac. He is still fighting past him. He got past once, had to give it up as he had that moment and got repassed. Now he's going to do it all over again. Meanwhile, the gap to the leader is going to start slowly building up with that gap forming between Red Baron and the three leaders. Oh, Balzac, moment, goes uh -oh. wide. Bruno up the inside and comfortably past the McLaren into 6th place. Next up is Luke Brax, who is right on Red Baron. Up the inside, is he going to make a move? There's a lockup. Red Baron is wide, giving him a lot of space. Very respectful there. They're racing side by side, but he's through. And Red Baron slots back into 5th place. Luke Brax now taking 4th. Is Luke going to be able to start closing the gap to Rogaine? They're outside of DRS range, but as we look back from Luke Brax, we have got uh, three behind him, all in consecutive DRS range, all the way back to Balzac. This is a pretty, ra pretty crazy race so far. And look at that, JDR is pulling out a second to lap now. So he is going to have some big pace. And the question is now, what is his strategy going to be? Is he going to go for the conservative strategy? Just go change relatively soon, take the hards, ride them to the end? Honestly, that seems like the move to make right now. Bruno making a move here on Red Baron. And he sends it down the inside of Luke. Can he make? Is he gonna? Ooh, is he gonna make two? Moment. He does. I believe he does, and that's up to fourth place. Luke Brax is not going to be happy with that. He is going to try and make a move back here, but He's Bruno has his back. DRS still. There's no move here. But there's a lockup. This presents an opening window. But oh, there's a yellow flag. There's a Ferrari. It's a Ferrari. That is sideways. It's Doroga. Oh, across the track. And he's, um, he doesn't have the right side of his wing, it's missing, so he's gonna go into the pits. Yeah, I see, I see damage on that front. Uh, he's gonna need a new nose cone, that's going to be difficult. 
so Bruno in P4 is yeah. going to start chasing uh, Crit right now. Yes, this is this is what we were talking about. It's the uh, it's the Bruno charge now. JDR oh, does no. pick up a time penalty that could be significant later on in the race. He can't just rely on track position. He needs to have track position and a time gap now. Yeah. So uh, that Renault teammates actually no team orders, from what I know. There's a uh, you know a clean fight hopefully. But you know them fighting is not you know it's it's not helping them. Because they could well, be, you know it could be pulling away from Bruno and uh, just get a P2 and P3 and you know fight it out towards the end. That said, they might be also, and I, I very much doubt that they're thinking about it this much, I think they're just focused on the race from lap to lap. But strategically, if you assume that Bruno's got the pace, this is the fight for third place right now. This is Rokane versus Crit. This is two guys who've gotten multiple podiums this season. And with Bruno closing in on them, they know one of them, if all things hold together, is likely to be fourth here, and some of them is go one of them is going to be third. Yeah, it's still really hard to say what's going to happen in this race. And we got to look in the pits. Taking his I think first he's pit the stop. first one, first one The first non-accident pit stop. Yeah, and he's going on the mediums. So he's going to have to go for 26 laps on them. I mean, I think it's doable, but those yeah. tires are going to be rough at the end of the race unless he is doing a soft, medium, soft, which could be a valid strategy here. Although it'll be hard to make up the gap, especially with the traffic that we've got here. 17 racers on a short track like Austria is nothing to sniff at. Yeah, we got overtakes all over the place. Prestige team making a move on Nameless Knight into turn 3. Makes his second and Brick has a little bit of a moment out of turn 3. Gets overtaken by Prestige as well. And Nameless, name, nameless Knight too. Nameless Knight is going to try around the outside, let's see if he can make it stick. And Ian on gap flag here. A tight fight from ninth place right now. Yeah, there's a lot of fighting going on. Oh no! Actually. Nameless Nate almost sideways. He manages to save it, but it goes off the track there. And now he's got Droga coming up right behind him. Uh, Nameless Nate, I don't see any front wing, front wing damage, so I think he is going to be just fine. Rick Lott now, is, close yeah, behind Prestige. Gonna... Brick got overtaken by Prestige on the exit of turn 3. Brick had a... Uh, but he's keeping uh, the gap, if he can keep the DRS here. Jay and Pat all the way in the back, they're having a, a little fight too. Well, there we have it. Up and down the grid. So JD with that 6 second gap now to P2. Yep, like I said, he's just pulling out comfortably a second to lap right now. I really I think, think that Bruno, the soft to hard is the move for him. I think Bruno made some kind of a mistake somewhere, because uh, I saw that the gap to Rogan was 2 seconds, now it's 4. So well, he's running a very moment. slippery, it, it, he's running an unstable, difficult setup. It's very good, but he has to have perfect control because he just keeps on having these moments that are costing him a lot. And if he's making up half a second with that, but he's losing two seconds every couple of laps, it's not really paying off. Yeah, usually with, you know, aggressive setups, you can be really fast on them, but the ones you make a one... A single mistake is pretty much over. You're just gonna overheat the tires and the temperatures are uh, most likely never going back to normal. So you, you just have to drive perfectly. I think and for fast. the first time in the race we only have one set of cars who are within a second. Oh, hey, we've got a pit stop for Rogaine. He is the first of the Renaults to pit. And he's going on the hards. Alright, he's gonna take hards to the end. The, uh, the, the safe strategy as I'd see it. Yeah, 
the, you know those are going to make doable. it. You know he's not going to have any problems with tire wear. You know he didn't have to run really late on these softs. More pit stops. We've got Ian Brax into the pits, and now both of the Brax brothers have pitted. And Ian is on the mediums, and he's doing a wing change as well. Yeah, I think there was some light damage on there from a little bit earlier. Gap flag right behind Rogaine. But Rogaine is going to be pulling away from him now. He's got those fresh tires. And the key is, how is he going to do? Is Chris going... Pardon me, is Chris going to pit this coming lap? Let's watch. No, he is not. Staying out. And the interval is growing larger and larger. JDR is running away with the race right now. And meanwhile, uh, Bruno has closed the gap to two seconds to Crith. So our uh, so our discussion about him being able to make a charge up definitely happening here, and he might even be able to pull an overcut uh, since he's going up against a Renault on hard tires. Can he get better pace on worn softs than you're going to get on a Renault on fresh hards? That's the question. I think with uh, with Bruno's pace, he very well may be able to do that. Yeah. See, Bruno has a 10 second gap that he needs to close down to even start fighting JD. And he's still got a car in front of him. And critically, the like, gap... Keep in mind, keep in mind that JD... And Kriv, they both have penalties. That is true. So essentially, and that gap, that 10 second gap, turns into a 7 second gap. Bruno is pitting. Bruno is pitting. Yeah, and so, so is, is Krith. The two of them are both pitting right now. If either of them has any wing damage, this is going to be difficult. Alright, no penalties going into the pits there. Yeah, and uh, Balzac and Red Baron also in the pits. And that so promotes Kriv, Bravo into Kriv second on place. The mediums. Bruno on the mediums as well. And he oh, up delayed! In the because of the uh, coming uh, of Balzac, but he does pull out ahead of Balzac, but that leaves him behind Bruno. Yeah, so because Bruno got held up in the pits, now Luke is in front of him. Yeah, so there we go. Gets the undercut, Luke Brax. Yeah. And now we've got some work here, and he's out on the medium Let's tires. See JD. Let's see if JD is going to pit this uh, this lap, and looks like he is pitting. Yep, yeah, he's lined up for the pits, and here he comes! JDR into the pit lane. Pre I'm pretty sure he's going to come in for mediums, since he's pinging that late. And what's Raro going to do? Because 16 laps, he's got to pit. There's no way he's doing more laps on the softs than he's doing on mediums. This has That's to be it. So JD pits for the mediums. Raro in the pits as well. And Raro is going to be in a difficult situation because he's going to come up and there's this big crowd who's charging through. We've got Rogan, yeah. Griff, Luke Brax, Bruno, Balzac, Gapleg, and Prestige, and Red Baron all in a tight grouping here. And they're all going to be coming up past him. Meanwhile, we've got a little bit of a fight between Prestige and Red Baron. But it's a DRS train, so it's going to be hard to make a move. He's looking at it, but he realizes it's not going to happen. Discretion the better part of Valor, and Raro comes out in ninth place. And there everybody in Red front Baron. of him has already stopped. He's going but to have he some will. He's going to have that tire advantage, but is, is it going to be enough to you know, pull, pull him back up where he was before the pit stop? Very much that. I think that's just gonna be the, uh, the difficult part of it. Well, Bruno D4. Uh, well, you still got uh, prestige, you know, uh, because he paid it when he had damage, I think. So he's still on soft. So he's gonna, you know, drop back because he, he needs another stop. Let's see. Red Baron is on mediums. Bostic on mediums. Look is on mediums as well. The only person Even on though... hearts is is a uh, Rogan. Even though I think Luke is going to have to stop again, right? I think he put it lap 10? Yeah, I strongly feel that Luke is doing a soft, medium soft, very aggressive strategy. So he's yeah. going to have to make up some places if he wants to make that work. Pit stop for Prestige. So on mediums, and he's going to go to the end on those, hopefully. 
Well, one, what one presumes that with 19 laps to go. Also, do you see a little bit of rain off in the distance there? A little, uh, Have a look at the see. sky. There's a few places that are looking a little bit rainy off in the distance. I'm not sure if rain is coming. But look at look at those hills over there. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and give it a look once the uh, camera is right. Yeah, you'll see it right, right when you're coming around the, the pool. So far, it's a clear sky with some white clouds for me. Okay. But you did say in qualifying that rain is coming, so maybe, maybe they'll get some there, rain. There is always the possibility, and it is the mountains. I have no idea if they programmed it this way, but in the mountains, weather changes quite quickly. Although, I think everyone everywhere says weather changes quite quickly in place where I live. Also, Bruno, right behind Rogaine right now, and he's going to have younger, softer tires. I don't think there's a defense for Rogaine. He goes tight, and Bruno goes around the outside. That's comfortably ahead of Rogaine before they even... Oh! Rogaine almost tried to make almost a little move back, but he was blocked. And that is going to put Bruno comfortably into third place, and now, on equal tire strategy, he's going to have to chase down and try and pass Krith for second place. Meanwhile, there's a 10 second gap up to JDR. And once again, we have to reiterate, every single race that Bruno has finished, he has won this season. So can he close up? He's still without penalties. So if JDR isn't able to keep it clean, he might be able to close up that gap. Yeah, JD just saw the fastest lap time. Well, he's, he's certainly uh... not slowing down. Yeah. He is, uh... well, his ERS is at 9% right now. And I can see those clouds you were talking about. I can see those dark clouds over the mountains yeah, right now. Yeah, the skies are darkening now. I think yeah. our graphic settings are just a little bit different. I've got yours on one screen, mine on the other, and I can see that I think I've got a slightly different uh, particle shading of the weather, because it is definitely starting to sock in here. Could be, because I'm running the, uh, the lowest uh, graphic settings. I'm running the uh, the settings that make my slow driving at least look pretty. Yeah, I, I need the uh, the most amount of FPS I, I can get because I'm running the uh, 144 hertz monitor. Oh yeah, yeah. So anything below uh, 144 FPS looks just laggy to me. But yeah, it, it is definitely getting darker right now. Yes, and also Balzac right on the back of Luke Brax. He's within DRS range in the battle between 5th and 6th place. Uh, Prestige is also close behind Like Dien, and I see there's a change of position between Jail Patel and Bricklot. Bricklot is able to get past Jail, but he locks up. The two teammates almost have it coming together, but Jail recognizes Bricklot is through and uh, pumps the brakes, make sure that there's no collision between the teammates, no damage. They definitely don't need that, especially with Jail having 13 lap old medium tires having changed earlier on in the race. Uh, JL Patel, I imagine he's probably going to be, well, he has to be going for a two-stop. You're not going to be taking these uh, tires the full length of the race. And there's an over overtake attempt from yep. Balls. Mo like, move from Prestige on Luck again. And he's through. And he still has some DRS to put a gap in further. Here we go. Drogo and JDR. This is just a lapping. But Pat Lassart is right behind Droga. And Gab Flag, uh, right behind Ian Brax, looking at a, at a potential fight for uh, for 11th and 12th place. Meanwhile, Bruno has closed the gap to Krith to one and a half seconds. They're both on the exact same tires, the exact same strategy, so this is just going to be a very straightforward, uh, old-fashioned fight between them. There's not going to be any strategy uh, in terms of tires. It's all going to be about who can get the power down out of the corners, who can get through, who can take advantage of the DRS here. And perhaps, uh, I spoke too soon about the strategy thing, because everyone here must be aware that there is something going on in them thar hills. Uh, there, is, there is rain, there is at very least uh, heavy fogginess coming in here, and I would not be surprised to see something happening. Balls it going through on Luke Brax, Joe Padel picks up a time penalty. 
and he's through. Balzac up into fifth place. Luke Brax falling down. He's got those older mediums. He's going to be probably making one more stop. And if I were Luke, I'd be I'd be looking and just saying, hey, hey, you know, a little bit of rain, a little bit of rain. Can we get a bit of that? Uh, get a bit of that wet stuff. Meanwhile, Bricklot and JL Patel still having a little bit of a duel here. Bricklot holding on to the lead, but JL is trying to take it back. He's on old tires, but I think he's feeling I've I've still got the pace here. Or possibly Brick had a moment. Prestige picks up a time penalty. That's going to be a little bit difficult with Lacadien hot on his heels. Uh, do you think uh, Rain is gonna come? I I, I Jeez, hope it does. I, but, uh, I I'd like it to, but I I sort of think that it's going to maybe sprinkle a little bit, but I don't think it'll be enough for wet conditions. But that's just me being being biased towards uh, Rain looking like it's going to happen, but never actually happening in this game. So who's to say? Uh, I could be speaking from limited experience. Uh, Red Baron, with some nice pace here. We've got an interesting situation. We've got Raro chasing Red Baron, chasing Luke, chasing Balza. Uh, each driver uh, on a uh, on a different age of tire here, so we're going to be seeing a little bit of differential performance, even though they're all on mediums. Luke Brax got passed by Balzik, but Balzik has not been able to pull away. Bruno Raya in the move for second place, up the inside through turn one, and Krith falls to third place. Bruno Raya now holding second place overall. Is Krith going to be able to make a move back here? He's looking at the outside. Goes deep into the corner, but there's no cutback, there's no move here, and Bruno Araya is now comfortably up into second place. And now we've got JDR, Bruno, Krith, and Rogaine. Rogaine is a bit of the wild card here because he is on these hards, and they're costing him a little bit of time. He's falling off of his teammate. Um, and we don't know what's going to happen with the weather. If these mediums are going to make it a bit of a and moment there. Baron, uh, I'm Ooh, is that... I'm seeing rain, I think. I'm not... Yeah, I am seeing something, and that is rain, 100%. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, it's Missing that too, rain. Flaley. Well, we can make some, uh, some snarky comments on Balzac's behalf. Rogan <laughs> picks up a time penalty. And Fred Baron, right on Luke Brax here, and yes, I am seeing sprinkles of rain. Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting rain here in the Austrian hills outside of Spielberg. And this is going to upset everything. Your advantage, it might be gone. How long are people going to dare to go before the conditions get a little bit too wet? It's just sprinkles right now, but the, but the traction is going to start going. Uh, we've got Red Baron still following right behind Luke Brax. Luke Brax is going to be thanking his lucky stars for this rain because he is on 13 lap old mediums. He would love to throw on a pair of intermediates in sixth place with everyone else needing to pit and take this to the end. Meanwhile, we've got a little bit of excitement further back. Nameless Nate close behind JL Patel and Bricklot. Uh, the three of them in a fight for 13th, 14th, and 15th, which honestly is going to be fought just as, uh, just as aggressively and... Uh, with just as much enthusiasm as you're going to have for people up in the podium places. Ooh, a moment there for Nameless Nate, but he holds it together on his eight lap old softs. He is another person who is going to say, yeah, give me some rain, give me some interest. These softs, and he is the only person on the softs, these softs are going to be wearing out fairly soon. And he would love to put on a new pair. He would hate to have to pit once for another set of tries and then put on intermediates. Usually the good the indicator that it's time to switch to intermediates is uh, when they disable the DRS. That's, That's always the cue I look for. Yeah, you can also. Jeff is actually uh, he's pretty good with uh, weather too. I know it saying that to... Jeff is good at something is a bit heretical, but I'll, I'll allow it for this time because it's true. Yeah, Bro game I, gets us, I usually through. I usually tell him to shut up because uh, most of the time he's not giving me any. Uh, any good information, but when it comes to uh, strategy, overall I think Jeff is uh, pretty good at that. Now the question is, who is going to be the first person who is going to make the gamble onto the enters? It's definitely not time for enters yet. Red Baron going for the draft on Luke Brax. He wants this position. Is he going to go up the inside? No, he's not. He goes wide through there. And into the final corner. 
But Luke Brax also has the DRS. There's no drag reduction system advantage here. Is he just going to send it up the inside, through, side by side? Luke Brax goes wide and holds the position by going wide. Is he going to let that position go, or is he going to keep on fighting? He is going to keep on fighting. They're going side by side into turn two. Red Baron is still holding the inside, but he has to back out. I'm, I sort of feel that he, he went wide. He should be surrendering that position, but... Well, uh, that'll be the game's call. Seems to possibly just given him a warning rather than a time penalty for that. So for now, Luke Brax holds sixth position from Red Baron. They're coming through to lap the Ferrari, and that is going to, if he uh, doesn't get past him quickly, possibly give some DRS. But Droga looks like he's going to be getting out of the way, and he is ghosted. So Rauro, uh, sorry, Red Baron is able to get through nicely. Meanwhile, oh no, JD gets another time penalty. I think that's six seconds now, is it? That is getting significant, yeah. So that gap is uh, it's not 12 seconds anymore, it's actually six. Well, let's have a look at the, at the incidents here. Um, let's see. Picking up the uh, penalties. Three second time penalty for Krith. Three second time penalty for Droga. Three second time penalty for JDR. I'll just look for JDRs. Yeah, and that, that yep. gap is now 11.5, so it, it's going down. Yeah, it is uh, six seconds of penalties, and Bruno is pulling in on him. He does not, well, I, I don't even uh, know for sure if he's thinking about that stat, but I'm very interested in that stat of winning every race that he finishes. Uh, so far, he's got a full record on that. He either wins, doesn't start the race at all, or retires. It's going to be one of those three. Uh, if he gets second place, that will be the combo breaker for him. Meanwhile, Red Baron, behind Luke Brax, it's just getting wetter and wetter. You can see Red Baron slithering around here. Does he have DRS? Yes, he still has DRS. And as long as they've got DRS, I don't see anyone going onto the intermediates. But this is just going to be killing Nameless Nate and killing the other guys on those old tires like Luke, who is just wanting the intermediates to come. There are eight laps left in this race. And the positions are JDR, Bruno, Krith, Rogaine, Balzac, Luke Brax, Red Baron, and Rauro. Prestige and Ian Brax making up the top ten. Oh no! Red there's a Baron spin! Almost just Red Baron on. almost loses it, but he holds on. But now, on the outside, Rauro takes uh, over a seventh place from his teammate. Things are getting very, very hairy indeed. But still, it's not yet time for the intermediates, but someone eventually... Oh! The lateral drift there from Red Baron. It is a difficult situation. Meanwhile, Bricklock coming up behind Gablag here for 12th place. They're Ooh, very almost, close. Almost hits his uh, gearbox. And oh, been, goodness! Ooh. In the same spot. Turn 2. It's deadly right now. Such a low uh, speed corner. So little downforce. And you're putting on so much power because top speed is so important going into turn 3 and for that whole straight. That is really one of the moments that decides things. And now, J.O. Patel is right behind his teammate Bricklot. And once again, the racing points are going to be vying for position. Uh, J.O. on those older tires, 22 lap old mediums. Can he take those to the end if it doesn't go to full wet conditions or intermediate conditions, I should say? Bruno, not closing the gap much further, he's still 11.7 seconds behind JDR, but that's only 5 seconds, 5.7 seconds, uh, when you take into account the penalties, because right now, uh, really a, uh, a salute. A look. There he does, yes. Down, oh, so yellow flag! Yeah. Yellow flag, and, and there is the Mercedes, Mercedes off. Lacadian. Lacadian is off, yes. Oh, Nameless Nate is the first! He is braving the intermediate tires. Let's keep our eyes on Nameless Nate. He couldn't take those softs any longer. He is making a big gamble here on the intermediate tires. Let us see the kind of time that he is able to put up here. I'll put up my telemetry and lap data. Jail Patel yeah, also is, is uh, through on Bricklot. You know, we actually might never see the, uh, the change to intermediates because it's been raining for a while now. And uh, well, I think if it was wet enough, you know, 
it's been running for a while. The DRS, I think it's still enabled, right? It is indeed still enabled. I've been hearing the beat. Yeah, you yeah, can see the so... DRS flashing on Nameless Nate's car. He is holding close behind Bruno, though. And I think that Bruno would do very well to keep an eye on how this guy behind him is handling. Bricklot is back through on Jail Patel, and Jail... Oh, there we go. Jail Patel is pitting out of his very old mediums. And kind of as we predicted, the people on those old tires are the first ones to say, you know what, I gotta roll the bones. I gotta see what's going to happen here. And Jay is going actually on softs. He is not following the footsteps. Oh, the foot well, there we have it. Nate. He is saying, you know what, I don't think it's going to go to full wet conditions. I'm just going to take these softs to the end. Honestly, that's just as bold a decision. It's a moment where everyone is just waiting. Oh, Krith picks up a time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. That is going to be um, very, very painful for him. I think as yeah, he comes in. they are switching to intermediates. They think, are uh, indeed. And Rogaine, Rogaine gets also gets a penalty. The two of them both get a penalty. This is good for Balzac. This is but Balzac's really on these old tires. Also, JDR. JDR has pitted, and he is out on mediums. Bruno now leads the race. But JDR is only six seconds behind him. What's going to happen now? Is he going to keep on going here? Or is he going to recognize, you know what? There's there's a, there's not a future for these. We now have fully half of the grid pitted onto intermediate tires. We have Gabfly yeah. coming Everybody in. Everybody is pitting. Everyone is pitting. Yes, there we go. That is a JL, is that JL Patel having to pit again? Let's see. Uh, the only two No, people. that's Bricklot. Hey, but JL Patel. Three people. It's a... Uh... That's th that are not on intermediate. It's Bruno, Balzac, Raro, Red Baron. But there's actually a, a JDR is just people. is just chewing up the gap. He's closed yeah. in one and a half seconds on Bruno. Absolutely, intermediate tires are the tire to be on. But right now, can you afford to lose two seconds, three seconds a lap for just four laps? That's a twelve second gap. Bruno could possibly stay out this way, but is he going to dare to do so? There's another pit stop. Raro going into the pits, uh, and he's right behind Balzac. Balzac and Raro both pitting right now off of the 15 lap old medium tires. And DRS is disabled. There we have it. We That's, are getting uh... a wet race at the very conclusion of this Austrian Grand Prix in Spielberg. Oh no, did the, did the Williams stack on top of each other? They did. Yeah, they did. That's very unfortunate for Red Baron. That little loss of traction that put him behind Raro ends up costing him very heavily as he comes out some gap behind the Brax brothers. Pardon me, uh, he is uh, he's still ahead of Ian Brax, uh, but he's behind Luke Brax. Meanwhile, Luke Brax and Raro side by side behind Prestige. Prestige out on those mediums. He is going to get eaten alive here. Look at that. You can see the advantage right now. These medium uh, tires are not going to hold up at all against the intermediates, and Prestige is just swallowed yeah, up by Bruno, Luke Brack. JDR Bruno just pitting. took on a Bruno. Question is, can he keep up and you know finish inside that six second window? I well, I, I don't think he can. I don't think... Oh, look oh, at that. He can barely even put on the power. He's gambling on this. He is gambling, saying, Oh, I can just stay out. It's only another three laps, but it's three laps that are getting wetter and wetter by the second. The conditions could not be worse to be on he these old, a... worn-out mediums. He's in a really bad spot right now, because... He could lose second. He very yeah. well may lose second place here, because there's no chance to pit. J.O. Patel retires from the session. What's happened here? I haven't seen... Oh, he's oh, sideways. Man. He's sideways out of turn three. And on the inside, virtual safety card deployed, and this is a godsend for Bruno Araya. He is 5.5 seconds. He's losing so much time. Bruno does have to pit. He yeah. absolutely needs to pit, and this is his opportunity. With a virtual safety car, this is his opportunity. Uh, J.O. Patel's be. misfortune could well be a huge break for Bruno, who is not going to be able to keep his gap to JDR. Let's see what he does here. It could be that this virtual safety car is He's actually going to finish right when he enters into the pits. Well, this is to find out if he is the Lewis Hamilton. The, Bru <laughs> the, the virtual safety car is continuing. Bruno is going in for the pits. Here we go. He's through. He's clean. There is no penalty. He was not speeding in the pit lane. Meanwhile, eyes on Krith. Krith is just going through here, coming into the final corner. And the virtual safety car ends. 
The virtual safety car ends, and now Krith is charging. And Krith he takes second place, but it's going to be close. It's going to be very close. Was that a tap on the inside of the wall? Well, Bruno is going to... He's not got first. This is now going to be, unless anything changes, a comfortable win for a JDR. But the question is, can Bruno retake second place from Krith? Even if he doesn't, he still gets P2 because Kriv has uh, penalties. That is a good point. Yes, I had neglected to think of that. Yes. So Bruno does effectively already have second place. Uh, and it's going to be very hard for him to close 10 seconds, especially now that everyone is on to the intermediate tires. And you have to, you have to feel for J.O. Patel there. He went for the gamble on the softs. I very well may have done the same there, thinking, oh, it's not going to rain hard enough. And he pitted just before things really started to get wet. Uh, it's an unfortunate moment, but well, sometimes sometimes we make these gambles, and it's turned out better for some than for others. So, with one and a half laps remaining in the race, JDR has a comfortable 17 second lead. Bruno Araya is just uh, within DRS range, but of course there is no DRS range, so it's merely the one second gap to Krith. Rogaine is a gap behind, and four seconds further back to Balzac. Uh, Luke Brax is comfortably behind Balzac with Raro 1.3 seconds behind him. Uh, Red Baron, delayed by that strategy misfortune, uh, having double stacked with uh, his Williams teammate, is in 8th place, comfortably ahead of Prestige. Ian Brax is chased by Gadflag, who is in 11th place, 1.9 seconds behind. Bricklot then follows in 12th, and Nameless Nate, right behind Bricklot, having been the first one to gamble on the intermediates, he is now working to recover what he can from this race. He leads Lacadienne and Pat Lassard, the and two Mercedes teammates. And just led by Bruno. He, did, he gave up the position. Well, there we go. He's just recognizing, hey, I'm just going to hold on. I don't want anything foolish to happen here. I know that I've got my penalties, and he's already got me here. I just need to keep things clean. Just one and a half more laps. The final lap is about to start. Lap 36 out of 36 as JDR crosses the start-finish line. Meanwhile, his nearest competitors are still a full three corners behind. Well, we uh, we come in towards the final lap here for Bruno. Krith, already 1.4 seconds behind. Bruno's pace has been wild this race. Can he take fastest lap? That's the question. There's not going to be any fastest laps in, uh, in the wet. So actually, what am I saying? Who has fastest <laughs> lap right now? I think it's JD, isn't it? I, I wouldn't be surprised. Here. Yeah, so looking at the uh, at the standings right now, it's gonna be P1 JD, P2 Bruno. I think Kripp is gonna keep that P3. And Rogan is just gonna fall back the order, I think. Well, then again, Rogan, uh, continuing his pattern. Oh no! Bricklock goes wide! Bricklock spins off on the side! And he loses a position to Nameless Nate, who moves up to 12th place. Meanwhile, our race leader and our race winner, JDR, takes his uh, first head-to-head -head victory against Bruno this season. This is the first time they have both finished, and JDR has finished ahead of Bruno. And this is going to give him the championship lead, comfortably coming out of this race. Bruno was closing the gap. Look at that. He closed it to 17 seconds after... Having run, he's he's pretty happy about his recovery. A little bit of a uh, wiggle from side to side there at the end. Krith takes his five seconds for the answer penalty. Is this going to throw him behind Rogan because Rogan has some penalties of his own? Oh, and the Rogan Ferrari just bends it on the main straight. Balzac takes fourth place and gets promoted ahead of Rogan. I think Oluk is gonna. No, he did not. But no, Varo, Varo takes actually gets overtake. Yes, gets ahead because Luke Brax has those penalties. So sixth place for Raro. Well, hey, there we have it. It's the JDR Bruno Krith uh, podium. Prestige comes through and takes ninth place on his first race. So well done to Prestige. Ian Brax coming in. Uh, he is tenth place, but he might lose that position to Gabflag because he has some penalties. But no. Gapflag has finished because Gapflag, of course, has already been lapped. And there we have it. That is the conclusion. Oh, was Jail tapped? Uh, Jail says someone someone may have made contact with him. Uh, I just saw the race. Absolutely, and Br driver of the day, Bruno. I honestly that that would be that would be hard to argue with. You had the excellent management, JDR. 
dominated that race and well earned it. Bruno did a fantastic job in coming back. You really saw his pace through there. And here we have it, the celebration. Well, it's a familiar podium for Division 2, and it is the end of a very exciting, very intriguing race. I'm very happy that I had the opportunity to cast this with you, Co. Uh, I'm really glad you were here today, because let me tell you something. Talking to myself is uh, is not the, the best thing to do. It's Penalties for to days someone. here. So with the penalties, Bruno did manage to close it to 14 seconds back, and Bruno does look like he picked up a penalty right at the very end of the race. He was clean for so long, but ultimately did pick up a 3 second, but it doesn't have any effect on his finishing position here. Uh, Only two that... people that finished without penalties is Zoraro and Gap Flag. And Prestige did pull off a, a 3 stop, although I don't think that that was necessarily a planned 3 stop there. Well, so much for I mean, my 1 stop know. prediction. But I, I suppose you... everyone on the two. Oh yeah, you you, you got the podium prediction, right? You said Chris yes. P3. I said I said uh, I said Chris P three. Uh, oh, I see. I see. You are a wizard yourself too. Huh? Uh, well, I'm more a warlock than a wizard, but I I try. Oh, I see. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching uh, Div Two tonight. It's been a pleasure to have Next. you all in the chat. Next race is uh, Division 1 Austria again, and that is yeah. Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. EST, or 7.30 Central. Same bat time, same bat channel. Yep, so see you guys then. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much for tuning in to Formula Racing League, underscore. Okay. Dude, I messed up the fucking telemetry again.